of Physical Science. This is Mr. B, and we are starting Section 2 of Chapter 5 today. The title of this section is The Modern Periodic Table. So last video, we talked about Mendeleev's um, periodic table, where he kind of came up to it, uh, came up with it playing a game of solitaire, and how he uh, didn't quite know all the elements yet, but he was able to correctly predict um, the properties of the undiscovered elements. So what we're going to take a look at in this video is actually how the periodic table is arranged today and how is it organized and that's the first question we're going to ask ourselves is how is the modern periodic table organized and in the modern periodic table elements are arranged by increasing atomic number or if you remember we learned this our last chapter atomic number is simply the number of protons so in our modern periodic table today that's how elements are arranged by increasing atomic number so we're going to see in a little bit on the left we have uh, the fewest are the lowest atomic number and as I move our way to the right um, the atomic number is going to increase and then the properties of the elements repeat in predictable way in a predictable way when the atomic numbers are used to arrange elements into groups so when we use the atomic number or the number of protons to arrange these elements definite um, patterns are going to start to um, form by the repeating of different properties and that's what we're going to take a look at so the modern periodic table is based on atomic number or number of protons so that's the third time already they've said that so I'd say that's definitely something you need to write down here and as you can see hydrogen uh, that's going to be our element with the fewest number of protons followed all the way over here by helium and then we're gonna have lithium and so on and so on and so on it's just gonna keep getting bigger as we move from left to right and from top to bottom. So each row, so now we're getting into specifically about how this our uh, periodic table is organized. So each row in the table of elements is known as a period. So we can't just call it a row. It has a special name as a period. So hydrogen is the first element in period one. It has only one electron in its first energy level. Lithium, the first element in period two, has one electron in its second energy level. Sodium, the first element in period three, has one electron in its third energy level. And this pattern applies to all the elements in the first column on the table. So towards the very end of our last chapter, we talked about how the electrons exist in different energy levels. So if we go back here, um, these are our periods. So every element in this period has one element, or I'm sorry, one electron in its first energy level and so on with lithium again lithium is our second period right here so lithium beryllium all the way over here to boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and neon those are all in our second period sodium magnesium aluminum silicone so on and so on are in our third sodium calcium are in our fourth and so on five six and seven so those are our periods going from left to right and then the other way they're classified is based off of their groups and these are the columns so I would definitely write this down so the columns of our periodic table are called groups so if you go over to this picture hydrogen on down is a group beryllium on down is a group so on and so on and so on and so on each one of these is a different group so we don't just have rows and columns we have periods are our rows columns are known as our groups and the elements in a group have similar electron configurations so members of a group in the periodic table are going to have similar properties so I might have misspoken earlier about the electron configuration but we'll clarify that in class a little bit too if we need be so again hydrogen lithium sodium all these are gonna have similar properties because their electrons are arranged in certain ways and the same again as we move all the way over here to helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, so on and so on. All of those are going to have similar electron configurations, so they're going to have similar properties based off of that. And this pattern of repeating properties is known as a periodic law. So the fact that elements in a group, or our columns are straight up and down, have similar properties is because, um, is because of their electron configuration, and this is known as a periodic law. And so our next thing is just taking a look again at our, our current periodic table of what it looks like. And if you notice, again, we have <clears throat> periods going from left to right. 
we have groups going up and down and we can see here now our groups are actually labeled for us and again we'll take a look at later on in this chapter about in spe or specifically what each one of these things means but we're going to kind of start at the basics first so first thing is we're going to talk about something uh, the atomic mass of an element and atomic mass is a value that depends on the distribution of an element's isotopes in nature and the masses of those isotopes so we will take a look at what that actually means here in a second so the mass of an atom in grams is extremely small so it's going to be very hard to measure and hopefully we could kind of figure that out based off the fact of watching the video about how small an atom actually is and in order to have a convenient way to compare the masses of atoms scientists chose one isotope to serve as a standard so remember an isotope they have different numbers of neutrons in their nucleus and so there was one isotope that they're going to use to kind of compare to every other isotope when we talk about uh, kind of figuring out what their mass is so scientists assigned 12 atomic mass units to the carbon 12 atom because it has six protons and six neutrons and an atomic mass unit is defined as one twelfth the mass of a carbon 12 atom so in order to determine the atomic mass it's based off of the carbon 12 atom so every um, every single element that we have again we're going to see here in a second where the atomic mass is located on an element that is all in comparison to the carbon 12 atom because they scientists decided that that would be kind of a more convenient standard to use to compare everything to and so kind of going on along with that theme said so we're going to see what the atomic mass is uh, but there's several other things located um, on the element for when we talk about the periodic table actually there's four so there's four important things that we need to know uh, when we look at a periodic table the first number at the top is always the atomic number so that's the first thing you're going to see at the top and that's how they are arranged going from left to right is based off of their atomic number and that's the number of protons and then we're going to see their element symbol and we're going to see here with the element symbol sometimes it's the first couple letters as you can see chlorine is cl and sometimes the letters like gold is going to be au because it's based off its latin meaning and then we're going to have the actual element name and then underneath that we're going to have its atomic mass which again is based off of different isotopes and again uh, carbon 12 kind of being the standard isotope that we derive the measurement from and now we're going to take a look at why chlorine how we actually came up with this number 35.453 here because I think we kind of talked about how the atomic mass is kind of the number of protons plus a number of uh, neutrons uh, but we're going to take a look at how we're going to get a little more specific with that definition here in this chapter. Uh, so in nature, most elements exist as a mixture of two or more isotopes, meaning there's some elements that might have two neutrons, some elements have one, uh, they're still both hydrogen though. And so the element chlorine has an atomic mass of 35.453 atomic mass units. And where does that number come from? So the two natural isotopes of chlorine are chlorine 35, and chlorine 37. So an atom of chlorine 35 has 17 protons and 18 neutrons, which would we expect because 17 plus 18 is 35. And an atom of chlorine 37 has 17 protons and 20 neutrons. So that's pretty simple. So that is um, our two naturally occurring isotopes of chlorine. But if you're going to notice that why don't we have kind of a more even number? Um, because this table shows the atomic masses for the two naturally occurring isotopes and the value of atomic mass for chlorine is a weighted average so that's an important thing it's a weighted average and because if you add the atomic masses of the isotopes and you divide by two you're gonna get 35.967 not 35.453 so what a weighted average is is that since chlorine 35 occurs more often so we can see here that there's more chlorine 35 than more than chlorine 37 that means we have to assign a greater value to this chlorine 35 it gets more attention than the chlorine 37 when we're making our calculations uh, that's what a weighted average is um, if you're taking I know for some classes uh, test grades are a weighted average so they're technically worth more points than just your simple homework assignments so that's kinda how we determine the atomic masses uh, why they are so uh, kinda have some so many decimals after them why we simply just can't have whole numbers because it's a weighted average kinda based off of how often they occur in nature so I know that's a little bit more confusing and again that'll be something we go over more in depth in class as well 
So that's it for the first half of this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.